Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today it is all about anchoring, reporting, television, news, business, you name it, we're gonna talk about it. I've been getting a lot of messages online saying do more videos that relate to your job and getting into the news business and I've only been doing this for four years, five including my internship in San Francisco, but I have learned a lot over the last five years in the business and I've definitely experienced a lot of different places, a lot of different people, yada yada. So I came up with a few things I want to talk about and hopefully that will help folks out there who are just getting started or if you're in the business like I am and you're just like, yeah, I feel that way too. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm not alone. So let's just get right into it. Um, I use my phone. so. This is like where all my notes are coming from. So again, I have been doing this for the last four years and then the year before that, I started as an intern in San Francisco for both the ABC station and the CBS station. Um, and then I got my first job in Alpena, Michigan, which seems like forever ago, but I was only there for seven months. Alpena, Michigan is literally like all the way up here. It's basically Canada. And it's one of the smallest markets. So I started from the ground up and it was good because I didn't go to a broadcasting school. I didn't go to school to be in broadcast journalism. I went to school for communications and I didn't really know what I was going to do with that. So moving to Michigan was an eye opener and I'm so glad I didn't even stop and think about what I was doing because I would have said no. I just did it and looking back, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Um, so yes, location can be scary because you're constantly moving around. You sign two year contracts and then you move on. Um, and so it can be really exciting because looking back, I'm like, gosh, I've lived in you know, the city, I've lived in Michigan, I've lived in Texas, and now here I am in Charleston. Like I would never live in any of these places because my family, all lives in California like no one leaves because um, why would you California is the best um, okay next working with new people that in and of itself is a lot it's kind of like going to college for the first time you're just like why I'm meeting so many different kids from so many different areas and you know it's like learning to deal with people especially in group projects but at work it's like you're in very tight quarters and you're, you know, it's a dog eat dog kind of world in the local television news business and you work with people who you really love and then you work with people who are just like, yeah, I probably wouldn't be friends with you outside of work, but you know, we're going to be cool here. And it's learning about being like cordial, being on your best behavior, knowing when to play the game. And that's like that for any job. It's like that for life. And you meet really interesting people and sometimes your personalities don't click, but that's what I found the most rewarding from this job. Like to look at it from a life standpoint is, wow, I've met all these people and also I've learned to deal with different people. We don't come from the same background, but we can work together. And that's something that is so invaluable that um, I really appreciate, definitely. Um, okay, so pressure is another thing on what you can expect. I mean, you've had pressure through high school and college and now with work, any job has pressure on you. The local television news business, the pressure is constant because you have to be the first, you have to be the one who scoops it from the other station. You know, you have to be on top of your game. You have to always make your contacts. It's, it's like you're on a time crunch every day. So while people might get a week to work on a project, you have, like five hours to work on a project and get it done and then it's over with. So all the pressure that happens in one day, it goes away and then it starts again the next day. Um, if you can handle pressure in this business, you can do anything. If you want to get out, you can do anything. Um, schedule. That is probably by far the biggest thing that I have to tell people about is the schedule. You could be hired for something, for a schedule and it'll change like that. Um, you know, that's what happened to me when I moved here in a good way. I was hired just to be the Monday through Friday reporter. Um, but they decided to make me a weekend anchor. So, you know, now I'm 
a, like a split shift where I work during the week and I work on the weekends. Um, but yeah, your schedules can be really difficult. I get up every single morning at 2.30 and I have to be in to work by 3, 3.15 um, and that can be exhausting. People who work night side, they stay up all the way till midnight and then when they get home you're still so wired so then you stay up another hour and your schedule can be really hard on your body, mentally, physically, um, and then it's hard to create a life outside of work with that schedule but you know I might work really early mornings. I love it though. I'm off, I get to take a nap, and then I have the rest of the afternoon to do what I wanna do. Yes, I only get about six hours of sleep and somehow I can function, but I love it. And if you get to be put on a schedule that you love, it's, it's gonna make a world of difference. But if you don't, that's okay. Things are not permanent. Things are always temporary. Things are always moving. Your job is never set. You're always you know, gonna look for the next job or, you know, Th things are always constantly moving in news and nothing's ever permanent. So just know that. Um, let's see here. Being away from home. I know this one sounds like so silly, so stupid. So, like I'm not at summer camp, you know what I mean? So this one has been the hardest for me. When I was in Michigan, it was hard, but I was still really new to like being away from home. So I thought like, oh, this is so cool. And then when I was in Texas, I was only like, three hours away from home. I literally flew to Vegas and then another hour home. And so I could go home for two days and I would be fine. Um, but now that I'm here in Charleston, it takes all day to get home because it's not a one-way plane ticket. I have to go to Charlotte or I have to go to Atlanta. And that's what a lot of people in this business face who are just starting out. You're having to take those you know, pedal jumper planes to get to the next place or to get to, you know, where you're from just to visit home. So it's exhausting and that's what can make you miss home the most. Like when you're close to home, you don't miss it as much because you know in your mind, I could go home anytime I want. But when you can't go home anytime you want, you start to realize like, oh, I miss my mom. You know what I mean? So that's something that's, you know, I've worked really hard on being secure and being confident and just being like, you know what, I got this, I can do this. Like, yes, I'm gonna FaceTime my parents, I'm gonna FaceTime my sister all the time, but I can do this and I got this on my own. And again, it's not permanent, it's just temporary. That's like my mantra in life. It's not permanent, it's temporary. Um, okay, here's another one when it comes to work. This is something that you need to know and learn going into this business and always keep this in your head. If you don't feel like you know something, fake it till you make it. In this business, that's key. And guys, I'm sorry, guys are great at that, faking it until they make it. You know, when they don't know a story, they don't know what the heck they're talking about, they fake it till they make it. And that's what more women need to do to get ahead in life is to not go, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know anything about this. Like, don't tell anyone that. You fake it till you make it. You figure it out on your own. So people think you're smart from the get-go. People think you know what you're doing from the get-go. They never think that you have any problems from the get-go. And it really works. Obviously, if you have questions, ask them. But don't be timid or shy about things. You gotta make sure that if you feel like you know something. If you feel confident, other people around you are gonna see that too. And they're not gonna have any qualms with you. They're, they're always gonna be like, wow, this girl's got it. Even when you go home and you cry and you feel like, I don't have this, I don't know what I'm doing, I have so much pressure, you have to just fake it till you make it. Um, let's see here. Okay, here's another big thing that I've really learned in this job that I'm at right now. And I think this happens more as you um, get further into your career. Because when you're at the beginning, you're just kind of figuring things out. Like, where do I fit? What do I like? Do I like mornings? Do I like night side? What kind of stories am I, you know, good at? My thing that I'm learning now as I'm getting further into my career um, is that you have to stay in your own lane. If you want to go somewhere, if you want to be somebody that's bigger and better, you have to stay in your own lane. You can't worry about what other people are doing. 
you can't worry about what the other girl at the other station is doing. Like, you have to stay in your own lane because you can't go anywhere else. So you might as well not focus on somebody else. That's the biggest thing and that's the thing I see the most from other people is that they're competitive with other people when you should be competitive with yourself because you're not, you know, battling against your fellow, you know, employee. You are battling yourself. You know what I mean? It's like that in life too. Um, next one. Okay, here's a good one that um, I think a lot of people are timid about or they're just, I don't know. Um, people don't like asking for help, but I'm someone who likes it. When I have done work that I think is really good, I like to ask someone who I respect at work to be like, is this good? Like, what would you have changed? What do you like from this? And that's how I grow. And that's literally the best thing I can give to anyone. If you're just starting out anchoring, go to the main anchor and say, hey, this was just the first couple shows I've done, but tell me what you think, tell me what I need to work on because maybe I don't see it or you know, you've been in the business longer and people love when their egos get stroked. So that's another thing, you're getting brownie points, but that's they're there for that. And even though they might not be forthcoming with giving their help, no one's gonna say, no, I don't wanna help you. Like everyone's gonna be like, yeah, sure. Like, let's go look at your tapes or let me read over your script. I'll help you with that. Like, of course. Um, and people wanna help, that's human nature. So always know that you can go to anyone and be like, hey, I, I just wanna know, am I doing a good job? Like, like, take a look at my work. And that's what's so great about our job is you have work that's tangible that you can give to those people and be like, here, take a look at it. Um, because a lot of other places are just like, oh, let me think back to what you did when we have it right in front of you. Um, let's see. Okay, a lot of news directors, a lot of general managers, they say, you know, it's about ratings, and blah, 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 and it doesn't matter if Susie, you know, so-and-so emails in or sees you on the street saying, good job, like that doesn't mean anything. It does mean something. And they can say that all they want because whatever reasons they have, but it does mean something. When someone comes up to you and they give you a compliment, you take that and you hold on to that. So when you're not feeling that great about yourself at work, you remember, oh yeah, that one woman, she's watching it. Because all that matters is that you have someone on your side. And if someone enjoys watching you, that's all you need. You only need one person in life to feel like, yes, you're doing a great job. And I don't like when people try to, you know, tear those comments down from you or take them away from you when it's like, you know what, I work hard. And if people on the street want to say something to me like that, that is important and we should care about what those people say. It might be five people, but still, it's five more than what we didn't have before. So don't take that from me. Like, don't demean those comments because those comments and those you know, praises, they help us get through. You know what I mean? Positive reinforcement, I like to call it. Um, let's see here. Okay, a, a subject that I'll just touch upon because people need to know this. The television news business up front, the first couple of years, you don't make any money. So just know that you're not alone. The first like four or five years, you're just getting by. You're getting by, you're probably getting help from your parents, you're just getting by. Um, and then, slowly but surely, you get to that next job and you're in the income that you want to see, but that's just how it is. I don't know when it turned into that kind of business, but it is what it is, and move forward. Um, last but not least, um, outside life. This is a good one before we go. It's really hard to create a life outside of work, especially because this business, you're constantly on call. You're constantly at the beck and call of news, of your employees, of your boss. Like, that's just how it is. And so you kind of feel guilty the first six months. Like, I can't do anything outside of this. I can't make friends. Like, I, I need to be like on call all the time. But that's not life. Like, this, this job does not own you. You are not a network anchor you're not a network reporter like you're not on call 24 7 in the sense of like things are in dire need like you have a life outside of work 
people you know are married they have children they have other things that are more important than work yes work is important because it gives us a sense of self it gives us something to do and to feel good about ourselves um, and feel like we're contributing but it's okay to like have a life outside of work and it's also okay to take time to develop friendships to you know develop outside activities like finding a gym of your choice and then meeting friends through there you know you're starting over every time and you think in your head oh my god I only have two years here so like why bother but think about it in the sense of like okay I'm gonna give myself six months to just kind of grow myself into the community find a gym find friends you know go out to dinner maybe go to a dinner by myself and sit at the bar and talk to people like it's just all about putting yourself out there and not worrying like I don't have any friends yet it's just like it takes time you have all your friends back home that didn't happen overnight that happened in years so people just need to make sure they understand that it's okay to have a life outside of work and to not put pressure on yourself to get a life really fast every time I look back at my different jobs that I've had and it took me six months each time to finally get into a routine of things of like okay my life's settled here now let's pick it up um, and it seems like gosh that's so long but it really wasn't it goes by so fast it's crazy um, yeah that's pretty much all I have for my notes but if you guys have any other questions please comment below message me you can find me on Instagram at Anastasia Efremsky you can also tweet me I'm Annie Taylor WCBD um, but I love hearing from you guys and I have so much more to say but this is almost a 20 minute video now so I'm just gonna turn this off and I will see you guys next time